Hey, welcome to Kaimi Beaver's Unscripted, Unrehearsed, Unedited, Uncut. <laughs> In the next 30 seconds, if you don't think that what I'm going to share is worth your time, then I suggest that you just walk away. It's all right. But if you stick and stay, then I suggest you subscribe and you share. Today is a very sad and sober day for me and a very grateful day also, I would say. Why is it sad and sober? A few years back, I was hosting a program. A woman called. She was a middle-aged woman with children. And she said that she had HIV. And that she got it from her husband. That day, the discussion was infidelity. And what to do in cases like that. Pardon me. <laughs> but that lady has passed on. And um, her family sent me a message to let me know about it. She's left behind children. You know, there was a time when there wasn't much to do when you had HIV. But for about a decade now, it's been okay. You can have HIV and continue to live a long life. But people's systems are different, so you can't say the same thing for everybody. So she called and she said she she had just lost her husband. And then, but before she lost her husband, she realized, or she found out he had HIV AIDS. And um, she had contracted it too. And she said the relationship was you know, a bit estranged for some time. But the husband came back and, you know, all that. But what she noticed then was that when he got back, he, he forced himself on her and actually raped her a number of times because she wasn't ready to just open up to him. But he forced himself. And that was after she found out he had HIV. But at the time, he knew he had HIV. So it was just at the time that, you know, he was getting, it was beginning to show and taking a toll on him that he tried reconciling with her. So he knew exactly what he was doing. It was when he came, started falling sick very frequently so at a point she forced to go to the hospital with him herself and she asked for tests to be run and all that finally it came out that he was HIV positive and at the time he was he had actually he had you know started degenerating into AIDS now, the day she called, she was in so much pain, and she didn't understand why a man or someone could be so wicked to do that to her, when he knew well they had children, little children. So we had to talk to her, but after that, of course, we, I, I got into a relationship. I, I developed a relationship with her, check on her and all that. And um, 
she got better and then got worse, got better, got worse, and now she's gone. And it has brought back the memory of another very good friend I lost, an ex actually, um, 20 years ago. <laughs> and um, I mean, he was one of the people I really loved and cherished. <laughs> I have loved just a few times in my life, and he was one of those people. My mother loved him. He was an amazing young man with a promising future. But he contracted HIV and at the time, I mean 20 years ago, when you get HIV, it wasn't as easily treatable as it is today. And um, We lost him. But at the time he had the disease, he was healthy and everything. He actually died after we broke up. About eight months after we broke up. So, <laughs> I remember when he got sick, I went to see him and all that. Then one day he opened up and told me exactly what it was because at the time it was only in the news and then there were these um, Ugandan HIV AIDS um, documentaries that were shown on TV and we watched but I didn't know anybody that close who had HIV. And then in um, about a year after he passed, I met a young woman in church who was actually in her final, like the final stages. So she had run away from the hospital. She couldn't stay there anymore. And at the time, it was as if she wasn't of any use to the hospital because, I mean, she was occupying space and, you know, they didn't care whether... When they reached that stage, they stayed in hospital or they got out of hospital. So a lot of them, you know, just ran away. By the time she had all the sores and the fever and everything. Beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. She passed. She passed not too long after I met her. But before my ex died, he told me what was killing him and he asked me to go and get a test <laughs> because in those days you know we, we we thought because I mean there was so much myth surrounding HIV AIDS at the time we thought that even um, sitting with somebody on the same chair you could contract it and all that but he educated me and he told me that I should go and get tested. So I did. But the test came, of course, after he had passed. I mean, the results came after he had passed. But I remember the day I got the results. It was one of the scariest days in my life. Because I didn't know what it was going to be and I didn't know what was going to happen to me I mean I think I even died before I got the results and when I got it actually I think I died and I was buried and I resurrected and died again before I opened that envelope I had I was sweating I was nervous. Immediately, my tummy started running. I, f I can't explain the way I felt. Probably someone who's taken an HIV test before. Someone who has actually seen um, 
a lava die from it and they get it done <laughs> that person had already you know condemned themselves or sentenced themselves to death a person like that will be able to understand what i'm talking about but it was the scariest moment of my life But before he died, what he told me was that after educating me and all that, he said, Kaimi, you won't have it. And I said, what do you mean I won't have it? Because right from the moment he told me, I started shivering. He said, no, you don't have it. I said, how do you know? He said, I don't know. I just believe you don't have it. I said, really? <laughs> I don't know how much or what what your belief can do for me right now. But right now, as I'm sitting here, it's as if I have even died already. It was... I don't know what it is like to be, to be on death row. But it felt like I was on death row. So from that period, and there is a period they give you before you go for the result. It's not like going for a malaria test. So for those weeks that I had to wait, it was torture. I didn't know what the outcome was. But as far as I knew in my head, I was gone. My life kept playing before me. I said, wow, is this the end of me? What sort of mistake is this? How could I have foolishly, you know, done this to myself? One strange thing in that relationship was that when I met him, and we actually worked together, so when the relationship developed, for some weird reason, I didn't sleep with him. And I believe it was just God who was shielding me. I didn't sleep with him. But of course, <laughs> kissing and all that, yeah, we had we had gone the whole nine yards. But I never slept. And when he talked to me, he didn't even use that as an instance or the reason why he said I wouldn't have it. But he said he believed, he just believed I wouldn't have it. Because he could contract it through saliva and, you know, blood and all that. So, I got my results. It took me about two days, almost three days, to open it. And I couldn't tell anybody. Because at the time, you couldn't talk about HIV AIDS. Like you're talking about malaria. So I couldn't share it with anybody. Not a single soul. So I went through it alone. And if he were to be alive, he could have been there to even support me. Wasn't me. <laughs> Finally, I gathered the courage and I opened it. And it was negative. And I was still not happy. I was still not happy because you have to go back for another test to make sure. Because for some, the virus stays in the system longer before it begins to show. So you had to go for another test <laughs> to confirm. And if you have a lover who has had it and has passed on, then you're at a, high, a much higher risk. So till the following few months that I got the next one, that one I was desperate to open it and see the result to me and it was negative <laughs> I'm talking about this 20 years later and I am 
laughing. I never knew a day would come that I would ever laugh about this. Never. It was not funny. And even though I got those negative results, from time to time, I got a scare. For about five years after that, from time to time, I got scared. But what if it wasn't detected then, but I have it now? What if any time I was sick or I felt sick, I went through the same ordeal? But 20 years later, I still don't have it. And I can say that it was just God that shielded me. Today, for all of you that have lost friends and family and loved ones to HIV AIDS, my heart goes out to you. I wish my friend was still alive to see her children grow up. She's gone. It wasn't because she had sex out of wedlock. It wasn't because she lived a certain life. She got it in her matrimonial home where she was sitting faithfully at her spouse was not and whatever she did to him whatever happened to him that made him think and believe and actually did what he did to her to kill her he didn't think about his children and how those children will fare or survive after the two of them are gone But whatever anybody does to you, whether in a relationship, in a marriage, forgive them. Because this is not worth it. And the reason why this woman felt the way she felt about what her husband did to her was because the church was the one that was persecuting her. Her pastor said all sorts of things to her because she wouldn't give in to her husband when he came back. If the church had been a little patient, if the church had been more supportive, a bit more realistic, because sometimes we use spirituality and we throw caution to the wind. We force men and women in marriages to do things just because they are married to the people. But if the church had asked that woman to keep herself till she could trust the man again, would have saved her life. <sighs> to the memory of my friend I've just lost, to the memory of my ex, to the memory of everybody out there who have lost mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and aunts and my prayer is that those that are left behind will find a reason to go on and 
and they will find healing to go on. That they will not be trapped by fear. And for those children that have been left behind, I believe God will keep them. I believe He'll take care of them. But do remember them in prayer. There are three children. Remember them in prayer. Anytime you go down on your knees. And for those of you living with HIV AIDS, I pray that you fight the battle and finish strong. That your life will not be terminated before you are appointed. I am grateful for my life. I am grateful God spared my life. And there are many out there like me whose lives have been spared. Not because they are better. It was just the grace of God. For that reason, for those of us in those shoes, I give glory to God on our behalf. And thank you for staying with me today. I'm out with love, hugs, kisses, and you.